person says to Lindo, you're just picking out the parts that you want to hear. That's what he's telling you. Pick out the good pieces of candy. Pick out the good parts. Pick out what so whatever's lovely, what's of a good report, whatsoever things that you're picking out is, in fact, your salvation. And if you're picking out hell, that's your salvation. So he said, don't think on that. Think on what you want to manifest in your life because that's what you're going to create. To realize that they built the wall in the first place. You see, it was all open to you. And walls got built all around you. You let others build walls and you built walls. And now you're trying to figure out how to get out of them. They're, they're, they're es- the, the, the essence of, of, the, of the contents of your life. In other words, as you think you are. That says it all. And, and if you'll realize it, that every chapter in, in the whole Bible, each one has its set of ideas that you can't miss. But you will. <laughs> As I did, I missed them. Because in the first place, we find that the hardest thing to do is not only be patient, but to actually be honest with ourselves. You know, it's really easy to lie to yourself. It really is. But it can really be a big problem. So it's not wise. So just a suggestion. Think only on things that are lovely and of good report, and you won't have no time for any problems. The problem is most of us don't think that we're lying to ourselves, that we think that what we're saying is factual, that it's real. It may be. It may be factual. But, you know, if you stab yourself with a knife, it's factual. But the idea that they didn't think was was anything at all wasn't and it and and you did things you didn't want to do it, it's all in just getting your mind straight as to where you want to go what do i want to do what do i want to be and start being it that's what scripture tells you what do you want be it don't think about it be it if you know anything at all about it do that if you were going to write a book get a pencil and paper wouldn't that, wouldn't that be smart to get a piece of paper and pencil? Yeah, foundation. All you have to do is keep your mind on what you're doing and start. And you're told, if you'll do the thing, you'll have the power of the doing. There you are. It's just, it's just up to you to stand and see the victory. You're looking at something you want to accomplish, Stand until you see the victory. You have arrived. And what you do is you see yourself arriving. That, that's what going through the act. And, and Shakespeare told it. All the world's a stage. All the men and women are merely actors. And each man in this time plays many parts. So there you are. You're playing a part. Did you choose it? Or did circumstances choose it? That, that makes a big difference in the fact that you want to get ahead of it. <laughs> And the thing is, we started off early uh, in the talk when we were talking about purpose and people saying, well, I just want to know what my purpose is. What we're saying is, in essence, is, you know, what is God's purpose for me? And what we're misunderstanding is God's purpose for us is the purpose that we're choosing. But we want to blame an outside force to say, well, this was God's divine purpose for me. If that's what you chose, then that became the purpose. People don't really see how simple it is to not believe. It's so super simple not to believe because you don't feel you had a hand in it, but you did. And you had a hand in it as much as any person throughout history, you had a hand in it. Because remember this, I am with you always. So God's with you. And if you're not successful, then you're not listening. You're not paying attention to God. You're paying attention to ego. And ego 
doesn't care what happens to you as long as he gets his way. Whereas with God, doesn't care what happens to him as long as you get your way, the best way. Lovely and of good report. Think on these things. It's as you think you are. I mean, just that one statement should just knock you backwards. Like the one that Neville would always use. Man's faith in God is measured by his confidence in himself. If that one don't knock you back a little bit, <laughs> you didn't really hear it. <laughs> Humbling, isn't it? It is. People, they go to church for faith, but then they go home and worry about stuff. How do they make that connection? That, that they go to church, that's about having faith, but then they go home and worry about everything. Well, that must mean that they're not using the faith they got in church, or they forgot it before they got home. You see, that was the problem. I remember how many times after being at the hall and give a, give a talk, and and I, I couldn't think of something, but on the way home, I think, ah, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> but but you see, the thing of it is, is that you, you start you start doubting yourself. You start throwing things in front of you, you know, and. and and you wonder what's happening. What's happening is is that your mind is thinking erratically. Sit down, be still for a while, and focus. And you'll find relief right then and there. If you'll do it seriously, you'll, you'll have the relief. And people say, well, I can't, well, what can, how can I change what I believe? <laughs> Are you still two years old? Come on. Look how many things you didn't believe you believe now. So you had to change your mind, change your world. That's all you're actually asked to do. Change your mind, change your world. Well, if changing your mind changes your world, that seems like everybody's got a chance at it. I think that the thing is, in the simplicity, let's talk about changing one's mind. We do it every day. We get some new information about something. We take that new information, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. But now, that thing you say you didn't know, you know now, and it's changed your perspective. At that moment, you've been reborn in that arena of your life. The only difference is, is that they think that's a small thing or something. That that's it. Something too big, it would be too much for God. That's it. One told you to choose. And he gave you whatsoever to choose from, so he must be ready to back it up. I can't think of a better person to watch your back. <laughs> you said it. I mean, when you said they think that it's a small thing, uh -huh. they make a list. They go to the store. They go purchase the items. They put the items away. They put them in the refrigerator, put them in the cabinet. They think that it's a small thing. But what they manifested was sure. what it was that they desired. They, they produced their future. They Thank were thinking you. about going to the store, and here they are. They were thinking about the things they needed, and they're in the basket. <laughs> so, you see, you're thinking your world into existence. It's out of the mind of man. It's a virtual reality. As you think, you are, you do, you have, you be. <laughs> I, and that's not Lindo saying that. I'm telling, I'm, I'm giving you scripture. That, that's what I got out of the scripture, and that's what I got from the revelations, and that's how one checked out the other. So I wasn't taking it as blind belief. You see, there, there, a lot of times people say, "Well, that, that's just blind belief." No, 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 no. This is, this is seeing the facts of, of, of history. Right, right up to this time, that everything that's happened came out of the mind. What came first, the bridge or the thought of a bridge? Try that one on for size. And I'm going to put it out there to you guys, for those who may be saying the bridge, it was a thought. <laughs> thought is always first cause, and again, that's supported by Scripture. You go to First John, in the beginning was the word. We could say, in the beginning was the thought. However you want to phrase it, the vibration, whatever you want to call that. Um, that's good. That's good. Energy. Yeah. I like that. You see, I, put, yeah. I, I, never, I, I didn't 
I didn't think of it at, in, that, in that way, being, being the cause of it, you know. But, no, you're right, absolutely. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just... No, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So you're always, we've said it over and over again, but we want you to be mindful that you're always thinking ahead of your evidence. So when he's talking about what came first, the bridge or the thought, See, there is no bridge without a thought. There's nothing that you can look at in your life that was not conceived first in thought and then in what we call man-mind reality or, as Lindo says, virtual reality. So change your thought, change your world. That's it. You said simple. And yet, of the most intelligence uh, are... are, are seem to be not able to digest it. Well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of amazed that usually the only people you get to are those who really aren't that well-educated because they can accept a simple idea enough to try it, whereas the, the intelligence always requires all kinds of information and justification and reason and all of that. And that's something that the average person doesn't have. So it, it, learning, in effect, could actually be a block because you get your mind settled in a certain way and, and not able to change it easily. You can get tied up into things that are really none of your business or shouldn't be, especially as an actor rather than a reactor. I think that we've been so conditioned to react uh, to outward circumstances. And you're right. I, I think that sometimes man-mind learning, and again, we call it higher education, whatever you want to call that, sometimes can be a block. And we see some of the wealthiest people in the world, they never discovered there was a limit to their wealth. Some of the smartest people in the world, self-educated, never discovered that you can't learn that. You can't discover how to do that. So because they never learned it, they excel beyond their peers. That's the same thing that happens with spiritual knowledge. We're trying to discern secularly spiritual truths, and we're saying this just doesn't make sense. But when you begin to get into the silence, you'll discover things that you could not even imagine, things that will be opened up to you, truths that will be revealed to you. And it's just wonderful. That's exactly what I found out, that that's where the magic is. I mean, if you're really looking for the spiritual magic, as it were, that's it, the silence. And it's the hardest thing you've ever done. I, and if you don't think it's hard, then you ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah, actually, once you learn to relax, then you can stroll in. But until you learn to relax, you're, you're not even invited because you, can, you, can't, you, can't really, you can't really hear the message that, that, that you'll get as, as a revelation if, if you're busy talking to yourself or thinking about something. And you have to be quiet. And, and that's really, it really is very difficult at first. So that's how I know that the only people who are actually going to get the message are those who want to know first person. The rest of them are just seekers of, of either pleasure or just something to think about, but they don't want mm -hmm. to do it. They just want to think about it. And that's mm -hmm. like hearing, hearing the, the work that we put out there. A lot of people hear it, but it gets shelved right away. And I, you know, <laughs> the one says, oh, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you got it the first time? Wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you, usually it takes lifetimes to do it, so I, but you got it right away, great. You go, oh, I know that. I, I read all about it. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just really so amazed at the, the, the things people can actually tell themselves. <laughs> The lies that that you spoke of earlier, you know, and the thing is what I do realize and I didn't always know this. So I'm actually emphasizing the no, um, the hindrance to deeper knowledge 
is three words. I know that. 